Hello, everyone. My name is Lin Huynh. I'm the founder and host of Fan to Fame. We're here today with someone who knows a little bit about the game of football. And when I say a little, he knows a lot. He was a former UCLA Bruins standout and had a 10-year NFL career. Please help me in welcoming Logan Paulson. How you doing, Logan? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Hey, absolutely. It's a pleasure. I'm a, I'm a diehard Washington, or should I say Washington football team. Oh, there and, you go. And uh, I definitely grew up watching you, so it's a pleasure. Oh, man, I, that means a lot. Thanks. Absolutely. As we kind of reflect back on your journey, can you maybe yeah. uh, start about how did the game of football start for you? So I think it started in a, in a way that's a little unconventional, probably for most football players. Like I thought of myself as a soccer player. I was a multi-sport athlete in high school. And I thought I was going to get a scholarship to play soccer in college. And my dad just kind of, he said, you know, like, I'm going to sign you up for the football team because I think it's a good way for you to make friends. Mm -hmm. And I was at a small Catholic high school. Like we had 22 guys on the team my senior year. And uh, I just kind of went thinking that it was like a summer camp, something I was going to do kind of in, like for a short period of time. And then just kind of went well. We got a new coach my sophomore year. And he was a guy who, was very, very supportive of me and, and saw a lot of value in what I did and and kind of saw a potential that I didn't see in myself. So eventually he kind of worked it out and he worked it and kind of, uh, you know, marketed me a little bit and I got some scholarship offers and, you know, the rest, as they say, is history, you know, and uh, just kind of, they always say you need to be lucky and good. And I think yeah. my story really exemplifies that, right? You had to get the right kind of people supporting you. And uh, I think that's super important. So. Absolutely. I think your size probably helped too, right? Playing football. Yeah. I mean, when he, when he first saw me, he was like, you're not a soccer player, you know, you're a football player. And, yeah. You know, I, like when I first went out for the team in high school, like I didn't even know what the positions were, mm -hmm. you know, like, they were like, Hey, you know, who wants to be a receiver or quarterback or, and I had no idea. So I just went with like my, like a group of guys and I just kind of stood in the back and I didn't even know like what we were doing. And it was pretty, pretty foreign, but obviously, you know, here we are 20 years later almost. And, you know, like it's my life now. So kind of funny. Worked where, out. That's yeah. awesome, man. That's a really unique story. Being born and raised in the LA area, UCLA, that's where you attended your college career. Was that your number one pick or what led you there? So it's kind of funny. Like my, my, my family is a bunch of kind of academic uh, background. Like my uncle went to Harvard. My grandfather went to Harvard. Wow. My dad went to MIT. My mom, uncle went to Syracuse. College is like a big thing. My aunt went to Tufts. Like that's very, impressive. Very, uh, kind of academically focused family. And so my dad was always like, you know, you're not going to school to play football. You're going to school to get an ed education. So yeah. my uh, kind of final schools at the time were like Stanford, UCLA, and Harvard and Duke. Right. And so basically, um, you know, I wasn't smart enough to get into Harvard on my own, but football was kind of a big help in terms of getting me through the admittance process there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Stanford at the time was really bad and Duke at the time was really bad. And so UCLA just kind of fit felt like it was the best mix of academics and athletics at the time. Plus my now wife, my girlfriend at the time was going to UC Irvine, which is like an hour and a half away. Got I it. was about 25 minutes, 30 minutes from home, as opposed to being in Northern California, which is like a six hour drive or in Boston, which is, you know, like a six hour flight or, um, you know what I mean? So it, right. it just, it just kind of fell into place really nicely. I really, I only went on one visit, one college visit and it was to UCLA and I fell in love with it. And um, the guys that Coach Durrell had brought in at the time were, were outstanding people. And it just felt like the right kind of fit. And I can't say enough positive things about my time at UCLA. Like, you know, obviously from a football standpoint, it was very tumultuous. But, um, you know, like I met some awesome people and it's like a great campus. It's right near the beach. You can go skiing yep. you can go on the weekend. It's, it was a pretty fantastic experience for sure. That's pretty cool. I'd say for me, being from Virginia, you know, the, the Virginia Beach is about three hours away, but everyone here always talks about, I need to go to California. I need to move out there. So for you, kudos to you, because for me, I probably would have lost focus and went to the beach every day. But I'm sure your parents were really happy that you stayed there because they probably attended every game, I'm assuming, your family. Yeah, so, you know, like the UCLA plays their games at the Rose Bowl. And yeah. um, I'm from the San Fernando Valley, which is about 45 minutes from the Rose Bowl. So they would drive out there every weekend with my brother. And they'd sit, I, I don't know if you've ever been out there, but there's like a sunny side of the stadium. They'd sit in the hot, past the sun it, yeah. for, for four hours every day. And my, my girlfriend would be out there, my wife now, and just came out in a very supportive uh, family structure in my life, which was awesome. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So fast forward over to your NFL year. So in 2010, you signed a free agent contract with the Washington Redskins. 
Um, did you know, was there communication with them prior to the draft or during the draft or how, what led you to DC? So my tight ends coach, my freshman year at UCLA was a guy named John Embry. And so he left kind of uh, mid, uh, like my, right after my freshman year ended and went to um, coach in the NFL, mm -hmm. which was really disappointing for me because I felt like he was kind of, a guy who was kind of, kind of mark my trajectory and really yeah. helped me project to the NFL. Cause you know, the, I said, that wasn't my goal, but after the end of my, my, my freshman year, I was like, well, maybe this is a thing, you know, but when he right. left, I kind of lost that hope, but he ended up coming and coaching with the Washington football team. And so during the pre-draft process, we were in contact because he had seen me play the year before his son. I played with his son at UCLA. Okay. He kind of came back for a little bit to kind of help and be an assistant coach basically. And so he kind of knew where I was at in terms of my playing and you know, I had missed my true senior year with a foot injury. I had to get a medical red shirt. So I came back for my, my, my red shirt senior year and not a lot of interest because like the offense for UCLA was bad. The team wasn't very good and I hadn't played football in a year. And so he had kind of kept in touch and uh, on draft days, like, you know, I think, you know, I want you guys, I want you to come here as a, as an, un, as an undrafted free agent. And it was between there and San Diego. And obviously being from California, San Diego was a really big pull. And it's mm -hmm. funny, like with my agent, I had gone through every single team in the NFL. And we had decided that those were the two teams that were the best fit. So I was very fortunate that the two teams where I fit the best wanted me the right. most. And I ended up kind of defaulting to the Washington football team because I felt like Coach Embry had my back and would support me and, um, you know, wouldn't lead me astray kind of thing. And so that was – that was a pretty cool experience, you know, and like coming out here, I had no expectations of making the team. I had no, yeah. no idea that I would. I just kind of thought, you know, this is a great opportunity. I get to play with some NFL guys and mm -hmm. kind of see where I'm at. And then, you know, I didn't get cut at the first cut. I didn't get cut at the second cut. And I was there kind of on the last day, which was great. And um, they came and they said, hey, Logan, we're going to sign you the practice squad. And that was like, I was on cloud nine. That was more than I ever had expected. Right, right. And I went out to lunch with one of my buddies and I got a call a couple of hours later, about two o'clock, because they tell you at 11, you got to come turn to your playbook and talk to Coach Shanahan and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So give me a call and he says, hey, you know, we're, we want to sign you to the, get a call from Bruce Allen. Hey, we want to sign you to the 53 man roster. And I was like, I, at first I thought it was a joke. I called my right. agent. Like, <laughs> some guy said they were Bruce Allen. Can you just like, so it worked out, you know, and um, yeah. that was my rookie year. That was like kind of the whirlwind of it. It was a pretty spectacular experience for sure. That's an awesome feeling. I think sometimes just for anything in life, you know, if you don't expect too much and when it does happen, it just, it's just even more better, but we have so much going into it. I feel like the nerves kind of kick in and it's right. just so much pressure you're building in. So that's yeah. awesome, man. I mean, having a degree from UCLA, having your upbringing, even if football didn't work out during that time, I'm sure you would have found a perfect job for you. <laughs> elsewhere. <laughs> so that's awesome to hear, man. So like the average years in the NFL is about two and a half, three years. Yeah. You did 10 years, which is yeah. like triple that amount. Um, I think it's amazing. Like you said, you're being very humble about it. Like you didn't really have the expectation even making it to the NFL. Yeah. Long making 10 years into it. What's the key to that? Cause for me, you know, anyone can say they did something, but it's about consistency. So what's the key to that? Yeah. I think that's, you, I think you hit on something that's really important is the, con, is the consistent element. Like uh, my dad, you know, I told you my dad, my mom, they worked like a uh, very serious professions. My dad just recently retired after 43 years, kind of in the same company, working the same thing. And he told wow. me before I came out of here, he's like, you know, make sure you treat it like a job. And, yeah. and like my understanding of a job was like, get there early, stay late you know, make sure you handle your business and be a professional. And um, so like when I got here, like my dad said the same thing to me, he said, treat it like a job. Yeah. And so I did, I got here early. I like studied the tape, studied the book, made sure I was ready each and every day for, um, for the opportunities. Like I didn't go out, I didn't hang out. I just like, that was my focus because right. that was the priority at the time. And then that I think served me really well. Like I would come in with the backup quarterback on, um, on Monday after the game and I'd run through every single play that they ran in the game just so right. I would get it and be able to think about it and internalize it and catch the ball that was caught. And I did that for two or three years, you know, until I became like the full-time starter. And I like literally couldn't handle the workload of coming in after the game and running those plays again, you know? And so I, like, I just, tr I just treated it like it was important. And I think that's something that, um, you know, if I was going to impart some kind of wisdom on a young person, it would be like, if it's important to you, like you prioritize that thing, mm -hmm. you give it all the time that it deserves. And 
you know, whether that's your family, whether that's your job, whether that's your hobby, whatever, whatever that is, like, if you want to be great at something, you have to give it, give, give everything to it. Right. And that's what I did. And I like, you know, some people say that, but like, I'm not exaggerating. Like I would literally get there. I would, I had, I just talked to the strength coach, Chad Englehart, who's still there now recently. He's like, I remember you getting here at five 30 in the morning and the lift wasn't until six or the lift wasn't until seven, excuse me. Okay. So I get here at five 30 to start my lift just so I'd be in the building and be around. And then I'd leave at seven o'clock at night and practice would be done at three or four 30. You know what I mean? Like I just yeah. was there giving everything I had because I knew that, you know, like millions and millions of people would kill for the opportunity. And here I was blessed with the opportunity. So that would be my one, one thing is just be consistent. And if it's important, man, treat it like it's important. You know, if it's your wife and you say she's important, you treat her like she's important. (laughs) You're going to get a lot of kudos from your wife, especially uh, (laughs) Mother's Day coming up. I'm saying that. (laughs) No, I I got you hundred percent. I mean, I think what you just hit on is just hard work. It's, if it's something that you love and you want to do, just put all your work in. Sometimes that overcomes talent and all the things. Because you can grow up having all this great talent, but if you don't apply it, then it means nothing. So yeah. um, I definitely yeah. think you get on that. During those 10 years, you spent most of your time in Washington. However, you did spend some time in San Francisco, uh, 49ers, Atlanta Falcons, Houston Texans, um, and Chicago Bears, I believe. Yeah, I'm sure throughout that journey, um, it was overwhelming, I'm sure, just picking up and leaving. But at the same time, I think everything in life, there's always something you get out of it. So sure. when you reflect back on those years and uh, moving around, what was your experience? How would you kind of Yeah, so um, that's an interesting question. Uh, obviously, it's really challenging. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was challenging, like you said, to, you know, my wife was pregnant when I got cut from Washington and went to Chicago. So I had a two-year-old son. My wife was six months pregnant and I had to go spend the football season in Chicago and I was worried the whole time that I was going to miss the birth of my daughter and that's really tough yeah but again like I was providing for my family I was doing what I thought I had to do and I got to meet some really cool people while I was there and I got to learn a different scheme I got to see a different organization I got to see how different leadership styles and um, you know I got to kind of test myself in a way that was unprecedented at the time you know kind of going from one organization to another and like seeing if I could do it, seeing if I was just a product of the Washington football team. And so right. um, it was, you know, one of my best friends during my time in the NFL was the tight end coach there. And I still talk to him all the time. And so like those experiences are invaluable. You know, it was very tumultuous for me and my family, but it, it gave me an opportunity to learn something new and test myself in a different way. And like you said, every opportunity has something to be gleaned from, you know, and I think that's always important to remember. Like it might seem like it's not going well for you, but even when, even when a failure or perceived failure happens, it it provides a tremendous learning experience. Yeah. I definitely try to remind myself that too. And uh, I even tell my friends when we call each other up, kind of venting to each other. I feel like I'm saying something that they've told me and vice versa, but it's just like, yeah, throughout the bad times, it's when you look back, whether it be a a couple of weeks, couple of days, couple of months, couple of years, you reflect back and say, because of that, this is why this is where I'm at. And yeah. um, that's something I try to remind people and uh, get something out of it. You got to have a positive attitude regardless what it is. If you're going to be negative the whole time, it's going to be negative. Yeah. So yeah. I hear you hundred percent. When you reflect back on your career, what's um, the most memorable experience for me for uh, watching as a fan, I'd say during the RG three days when you, the 2012 season, but for you, what was the most memorable time? Yeah. You know, that RG, that RG three season was pretty spectacular. I mean, that seven game win streak was, was fantastic. You know what I mean? It like, it was, I've never been a part of a football team or any team that had won seven games in a row throughout my whole career. We're talking like, you know, AYSO soccer, you know, T-ball never won seven games in a row. I like how you put in (laughs) T-ball. So to be, so to, to have that opportunity and be, and I have it be at the highest level and just to kind of every week come in and know like you were the best team in the world is a cool experience. You know, like there's one thing about the NFL that I think people don't understand is like wins and losses are directly correlated to your job security. So you start losing some games and I've been a part of some really bad teams. You know, Chicago wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. Um, Atlanta was a little rough. Houston was rough when I was there. Like people freaking out, you know what I mean? And people, it becomes a very difficult environment to work in. And I think that, um, you know, I I think that having those seven games was was such a special experience because I was playing a lot. I was playing well. Mm-hmm. But the whole team was playing well. Like we yep. were all playing so well. We were all playing above our talent level. And it, and I, I think the other thing I'd be remiss if I didn't say is those guys were fantastic. Like mm-hmm. that whole team 
it wasn't a bad egg on the team. Like you could go through every guy and there were awesome dudes and it was just fun to come to work and play football. And uh, that's an experience that I hadn't had prior to that. And it's an experience I haven't had since. So yeah, uh, it, was, it was a pretty magical, magical time. But, you know, I think every, like we said, you know, like that's really cool. But every team that I played with, there was a really cool experience. Like when I was Atlanta, I met a guy from uh, the UK who was on the international transfer program and we'd watch rugby on the weekends, you know what I mean? Before cool. the game, like, <laughs> so I learned a ton about rugby and made a friend for life. You know what I mean? So yeah. even, though, even though these big public things that everyone sees about playing in the NFL, but there's also the small kind of quiet journeys you go on like team, team for team. And, yeah. you know, yeah. like when I was in San Francisco, I lived in a room that was uh, not exaggerating was 10 by eight feet and it was a single family home that had been subdivided. Yeah. And I lived there with like 15 other people, and, you know, and I'd go, get up in the morning and go to work and come back. And it was, it was tough living, but like, it's something I'll remember for the rest of my life. You know what I mean? And right. uh, it was kind of negative at the time, but it's one of those things I look back on fondly, you know, and about my, about my time in the NFL. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's those little things. It's, uh, you know, it's rough at the time, but when you look back, it's like, if I can go through that, I can go through anything. <laughs> Right. that's interesting you said that so when you when you get picked up by different teams did they not like sponsor you and like follow us a, a place for you to stay at or is it kind of on you well I was always kind of a fringe roster guy from day one you know you asked how I stayed kind of kept my edge and the idea was like I had I don't know if imposter syndrome is the way way to characterize it but I always felt like I didn't belong and I always felt like one day they were going to wake up and see that I didn't belong so I was always kind of you know grinding and scraping along the bottom and you know, I think everyone says, oh, the NFL, you're making all this money. And like, I made good money when I played for sure. But, you know, like the, the lifestyle is hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in San Francisco, I got cut and cut and resigned three times. So I moved my family out there to San Francisco. Yeah. Like, we're not from San Francisco. We're from LA. Yep. I got cut the first time. We stayed around. I got cut again. We moved the family back from there, from uh, San Francisco to Virginia. I got resigned. So then I had to spend another big chunk of time away from my family and yo, know, they're not yeah. going to sponsor me because I'm, I'm not, I'm nobody. I'm not a priority free agent. I'm, I'm nothing. I'm just a guy on the team getting a paycheck. You know what I mean? On the bottom of the roster, just, uh, I don't want to say slumming it, but you know, like trying to make ends meet from a logistics standpoint in right. terms of my family is where I'm at, where I'm staying. And so, yeah, like it's uh, it's a little different than I think a lot of people expect. Like I'm not, don't cry for me. Like I loved my experience and I loved every second of it. But like it is different than I think a lot of people realize, you know. Yeah. Well, hey, man, I think you're being modest, man. You definitely, <laughs> you spent 10 years in the league. You started a good amount of games. You've been very successful. So. Uh, no, no, I, I, like I'm not, I don't think, uh, I don't think I'm, I, I look back at my career with pride, you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah. But I think the thing, one of the things, this is kind of interesting and we're kind of getting off topic here a little bit, but you know, one of the things that kept me at it was the idea that I wasn't good enough. You know what I mean? That I could right. always be better. Right. And so right. that's saying that kept you going, kept you going. Yeah. It yeah. pushes you forward, makes you look back on it and say, man, like I was not very good at football because you see, you don't see the aggregate of good. You just see all the things you screwed up on. Right. That's, 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 it's a blessing and a curse. You know what I mean? Right. It's like the things you're like, man, like, Oh, like, yeah, like, I wish I could look back and be like, man, remember that catch I had? Like, I don't remember that. I remember the time <laughs> where I, like, didn't make my block and Alfred Morris got blown up in the backfield or I gave yeah. him the snack or whatever it was. Yeah. And so that's why it's, you kind of look back on it in a bittersweet way because you, you, the thing that kind of kept you wired and moving forward yep. is also the thing that, that makes you look back on it in kind of a negative way. You know what I mean? So. Hey, you need something that keeps you going. And I think a lot of guys you see, you know, I don't know it personally, but just seeing on television and hearing about it, there's so many guys who are like, you know, they're so talented. Like, what happened? Right. Um, I think a lot of pilots do. They got, you know, just content with what the, with things were. They're expecting it. So right. um, I think it not only goes for sport, but just on anything. Just remember, remember yeah. it doesn't matter how good you are. Um, it's uh, everyone's replaceable in some way or fashion, and you got to stay ten, step, ten steps ahead, especially in in the professional realm like you were in. So right. I got you. I probably touched on some of it, but. What are some things you learned or what is the key thing that you learned prior to coming to the NFL? Like throughout those times, like what did you learn those 10 years in the league? 10 years in the league, like the thing that. That you didn't uh, know prior to coming into the NFL. Um, well, from like a football standpoint, you realize that like um, no matter how many, how dumb somebody seems on TV, if they're in the NFL, they know football at a high level. You know what yeah. I mean? They're really smart, intuitive guys when it comes to the game and um 
I think the other thing is just how different each team is. You know, how everyone's got a different leadership style, different philosophy, different way they approach free agency, different way they approach the draft, different way they approach personnel, different way they approach installing scheme. And that's that was really good for me to see, right? Because right. like in life, there's you'll meet some so many people who are so different than you, right? Yep. And you, man, that's not the right way to do that. But kind of being through all of these different organizations that are at the highest level of their profession, there's only 32 of them, but to be with five different ones, yeah, um, you know, you get to kind of look at it and say, you know, there are different ways to be effective in different spaces. You know, there's yep. no one cookie cutter solution to any problem even though even though it seems like it might be that way mm -hmm. so that's something that i've been able to kind of carry with me now you know i've yep. kind of got a whole bunch of different kind of uh business endeavors that i'm pursuing and like mm -hmm. oftentimes i find myself saying like oh no like you know i'm not doing this the right way and then i think right. back on the nfl and i say you know what there is no right way it's right it works for you and is it effective and is it helping you achieve your goals and if it doesn't do one of those three things, then you need to change your methodology, but it right. doesn't mean it's fairly wrong. Does that make sense? No, that makes total sense. I think one thing, it doesn't matter what field you're in, they want someone that's very adaptive and just no. your resume, you can tell them right there, hey, <laughs> I spent 10 years in the league. I've moved around my experience. That's that's one thing I have no issues with. <laughs> yeah, right. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, I got to ask this question. Um, I would personally, I personally thought we'd have a team name by now. Um, yeah. But we've made it to the playoffs last year, so whatever happens, happens. But if you were had to pick, like, what name would do you think this team should go with? You know, I actually kind of like the Washington football team. I, I, th I might be in the minority there. And, like, my dad, um, he always – he call, he calls me about the name pretty <laughs> regularly. He's like, why not just the Redskin Potatoes? Why not the Redskins Potatoes? And my father-in-law is the same way, and I'm kind of like yeah, – I'd be fine with that. I, to me, it's a name. A name is a name, and, like, yeah. I don't play for the name of the team. I play for, you know, like, the city and the fans and the yeah. organization. And so, like, like the Washington people, I love it. I, I think it's great. I mean, like, for a while, I was like, they should just go something like, uh, you know, something from the, the city of D.C. I don't know what it would be, but, like, something for the town that kind of yeah. – Something that little... ties back to the city, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, like, I was really – like, when I saw some of the names, like the Red Wolves or the whatever, I was kind of like, yeah. oh, that's fine. But, you know, yeah. if you're going to rename it and rebrand it, you might as well just go with Make something that – yeah, more to the city, you know, like uh, yeah. I had a friend at a barbecue one time was like, oh, they should call it the abolitionists, you know, and I was like, that'd be kind of fun, you yeah. know what I mean? Because it is like there's an historical context for the area and, and that kind of thing. So I don't know, just so, I, I wish it, I wish they kind of took some time and didn't just go with the easiest name. Like, yeah, I wish they kind of found something that fit with the city, you know, and it kind of identified yeah. with this, you know, so. I hear you on that. Yeah, that, that makes total sense to me. And talk about historian and kind of tying things back to stories. Um, outside of football, you know, during your time at UCLA, you're a double major. You're yep. history, political science. What's yeah. your favorite time in history that you like to learn about or talk about? And did you ever thought about becoming a politician? <laughs> oh, so yeah. So like, basically, I, I just told my wife about this very, really recently. And she was like, uh -huh. no way you're going to do that. So basically what I was thinking about doing is like, because I was a history poli sci major. Yep. And I was like, um, well, if the football thing doesn't work out, what am I going to do? And all my uh, buddies were like getting ready to go to law school. So I was like, well, I guess I'm going to law school. <laughs> so I was like, I better enjoy this, you know, like training for the combine and going to mini camp. I better enjoy it because it's not going to last. I'm going to be in a book trying to get ready for the bar here or something, you know, or my GRE or whatever. Right. And like, uh, so that was, so I'm really glad I didn't have to do that because I was not excited about that <laughs> at all. I just kind of felt like I didn't have anything else to do. So that was what I was going to do. And then um, in terms of history, I really find like the Roman empire, like really fascinating. Yep. Like how they were able to kind of develop this culture, much like you would with like a football team, right? Yep. Develop this culture kind of expand to this monumentous empire. And then like the second their <clears throat> excuse me, ideology started to waver this thing, this crystal clear singular focus of the roman empire started to waver a little bit the the nation started to fall apart and mm -hmm. i find that to be so interesting like for two thousand years they were like the pinnacle of what it meant to yep. be a civilization. and then all of a sudden at least in the western world excuse me yep. and then uh you kind of start eroding ideas and you start making compromises and things just kind of go away you know and I, yep. I just think that's that's such an interesting case study and like um no one's let it better sense really you know what i mean so yep. We, uh, and I feel like we're kind of going through a similar phase now. I was going to say that, man. I was yeah. going to say that. I, I would say history is my favorite too. 
Um, yeah. Outside of PE and going to lunch, that was my favorite. <laughs> I, I loved learning about the Egyptian history, the Roman yeah. Empire. And I always think about that as well. It's, um, you know, a lot of people talk about what's going on in the country right now, not to go into politics too much or yeah. anything, but um, I'm just saying, you know, n- you can't be number one forever. Like <laughs> things happen. And if you want to stay up top, why don't you learn from what the other empires, the other countries yeah. dealt with? Yeah. So. Going in my nerdy streak. That's what I think yeah, about sometime yeah, internally well, I'm, over I'm here. About, I'm, 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 I love that. That's, that's <laughs> and this era is pretty good too for history. I mean, we got DC here, all yeah, the big games, right. um, the Civil War, all this. So just this is a perfect spot for it. <laughs> yeah. So like we went down to uh, James uh, Jamestown and Williamsburg yeah. a couple weekends ago. My son's really into that. And then Yorktown, and then we're going to Gettysburg here in a couple weekends. So you know, check out. I've been stuff. all those places. Yeah, they're, they're fun yeah. places. You'll see Lincoln everywhere in Gettysburg. So. <laughs> You'll, you'll see him just like statues yeah. all over the place. You feel like he's following you. But uh, no, all fun places. I got to give a shout out to my hometown, Winchester, Virginia. There's a lot of history there too for Civil War. So if you want to learn more about it, oh, cool. definitely recommend there. There's like George Washington's office when he was like 17 years old and all types of stuff. So Robert nice. these things. So throwing it out there. <laughs> check it out. That'd be awesome. Yeah. 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 yeah yep. Hey, some other fun facts before we kind of close it up. Um, being from California, who was your favorite team growing? Was it like the Niners, the Raiders, Chargers? Yeah. That's a good question because, you know, like I said, I wasn't super into football. Yeah. Um, and I kind of got like, so my dad, the, the thing that got me into football was my dad started buying me these draft guides. You know what okay. I mean? Like free draft things, you know, because yeah. I'd love to go through. I got kind of an analytical mind. Like I like to look at the height, and weight, speed, and read a little bit about the bio. And mm-hmm. then like once I started doing that, I'd follow those players to the different teams. So I'd say when I first and also like get Madden for the first time, that's when I really got into like, Oh, like this team, I like this guy, this yep. running back fast or whatever. And, um, and so I was really into the Tampa Bay Buccaneers because of like okay. Mike, Michael Scott, Warren Sapp, John Lynch, yep. um, uh, Brooks, the linebacker, you know, all those guys, Simeon Rice, that like a solid all, team. That, a solid you know, that was team, a great yeah. team. And I love, used to love watching them. And then, um, and then all the all the guys that I had followed, you know, from yep. the draft guide that I'd kind of check in on weekly. This was before fantasy, so yep. yeah, that was kind of like my little fantasy football deal, you know. And because um, yeah. there was no team in LA at the time, right? My dad yeah. was kind of an Oakland Raiders fan. He's from Boston though, so kind of big New England, big New York Giant fan. So we kind of watched more of them. But being from California, you would never get those games on TV. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, so it, that, that was kind of like my introduction: Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and then all the guys from the draft guide that I would check in on. Got it. When you, uh, so the draft just ended up and I know when I go on your page, you're a good, a good person to really break down tape. It really shows like when you talk about all that time you spent studying tape, I can only imagine when you played, but yeah. you break down players very well uh, with the draft happening. how do you think the Washington football team did? And uh, if you were like the GM, what would you have done differently? Who are some top guys you're looking at? Yeah, so I actually had to do the draft coverage for 106.7 The Fan and uh, yep. 980. So that was like a lot. You know, it was, it was like this weird kind of tunnel because like I was super into the draft when I was little and then to be talking about it uh, on the weekend, you know. Was <laughs> uh, so in terms of draft grade, I think that the Washington football team did a really nice job. I think uh, mm-hmm. fans were probably a little critical because they drafted a couple guys at spots like linebacker and tight end that they weren't familiar with, you know. Yeah. I think that's one of the things with the draft now, especially with the media being what it is. Like there are certain outlets that promote certain players more for whatever reason like pro football focus for example i think it's a great resource but yep. you know, they were really big on jok and so the washington football team fans when you know when the washington football team didn't draft jok at 19 were all in a, in a tizzy you know what i mean and i think that um you know jamin davis is probably a better fit for the washington football team but no one really had heard about him no one really knew that much about him and and so it, it, they get a little like what, what's going on you know and then um sam, uh, sam cosby at uh, in the second round, I think is a really interesting mm-hmm. pick. I think that guy is athletically one of the freakiest people ever to test at a pro day ever. Um, his tape's a little uh, up and down, in my opinion. Like he's very technically raw, but he's such a good athlete that he kind of gets away with all these things that you know normal technical like technicians wouldn't do. Right. So I think he's a guy that I am watching excitedly because I think he's got this tremendously high ceiling. He's you know he could be uh what do you say like he could be the the pro bowl left tackle for the next right. 10 years or he just is a guy so like you're hoping for that top end yep. 
you know, but like, it's really exciting to watch that. So I think, I think overall they did well, you know, I think of the fans, maybe not, may not get all the minutiae, but, <laughs> but they did a good job and uh, it's such a fun time of year, you know? Absolutely. So, you know, you, you were an undrafted free agent, 10 year career. Who's a dark horse for you? Who's someone who wasn't drafted that we should take a eyes on and kind of take oh note of? Oh my God. This, that's such a good question. So for the Washington football team or just in general? Just in general. Okay. But maybe this so, is for the Washington football team to take note of because you break it down really well. <laughs> so we're about to send this to them. <laughs> so the, this is such an interesting year because of the COVID, right? So yeah. there's so many good football players who were kind of um, bumped down boards because they didn't play or they didn't play a yeah, lot. Absolutely. Uh, like there was a safety from Florida State who I think, I forget who signed him. I think Seattle signed him who kind of was coming off an ACL tear. I liked, loved his tape, kind of flying around with his hair on fire. Um, <laughs> they, uh, big receiver also uh, drafted to Seattle. Um, what was his name? Uh, from Florida State also. Mm -hmm. And then there was a tackle who had 37-inch arms and was 6'8". Seattle, free agent also, um, who was 360 pounds. A little bit of a lazy guy on tape, but when you have those athletic measurables, you kind of say, let me keep an eye on him. Uh, he's a guy yeah. that, um, I think it'd be something special or also he could get cut before the first wave of cuts. Right. You know, like he's just one of those guys. So, <laughs> um, those are a couple of guys that come to mind. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that would have any kind of name recognition that I liked. Yeah. I mean, and that's, that's a fun part about it, right? Yeah. They're this year, especially kind of more than ever, like those guys have such a high likelihood of making teams and, and yeah. being impact players because the film and the way they evaluate talent was so different this year. Absolutely. Yeah. This, uh, the past few years have been interesting. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well, but I'm going to take note of those folks, man. I, I trust your instant. Um, uh, definitely take note of that. Uh, just yeah. a couple of questions left. Um, so if you were to give advice to someone who's like, you know, come into the league as a rookie, what, what is your advice? And what's the advice for someone that's like in high school or middle school wanting to get like a scholarship and make it a career out of football? Right. So a couple things, that's a tough question. A couple things on back there. So when I was in Atlanta, uh, I was part of the mentorship program there. Like, so yep. I talked to all the rookies and that was part of my role on the team. Okay. And one thing I used to say to them is like, you know, how many of you guys, you know, have friends back home that would, that would die or kill to be in your seats right now, right here in this room. And the answer is like all of your boys, like all the guys you played with, right. Absolutely. They all want to be here. Like even guys that like, you know, from your hometown who never really played football, they would kill to be in the NFL. Exactly. And here you are at the precipice of this opportunity, right? You're a rookie, you're getting ready to embark on your first season, first training camp, first off season, whatever it is. And all you have to do is just show up on time, study your face off and play every play like it's your last. Like that's mm -hmm. it, those three things, right? And those those don't seem like a lot. Like, and they're, they kind of look at me and I was like, if, if I told you when you were 10, that all you had to do was like study and play hard and be on time, like, would you be like, oh, that's, that's the easiest thing I've ever done, right? Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, guys come in and they prioritize other things. Like, I played with this guy in Atlanta, uber talented running back, but right. it just didn't work out because he'd go back to his room after practice and play video games and hang out and do, yeah. you know, whatever he's going to do, well, stay up. Focus. Yeah. yeah, stay up till 3 a.m. And he, he squandered his opportunity. And so, like, when that, yeah. maybe that's the thing that you want to get out of it is don't squander it. If yeah. you're here, like, don't, this has been your goal for a long time. Like, make sure you prioritize it. Right. So for, for young athletes, I think uh, one thing I always say to young athletes is like, hey, you know, like the odds of making it to college, making it to the NFL are very small. Yeah. Um, and it would just be enjoy what you're doing now. Like, don't mm -hmm. think too far ahead, right? If it's yeah. important to you and you want to continue to do it and you want to kind of um, widen your base of like athletic development because you love it, do it. Don't do it right. because of the money, right? Because eventually that's going to wear out, you know? Yeah. And like you talked about, like with me and my career, like the thing that kept you going was like the drive, right? The passion for the little things, the process. Yeah. Being like, that's another thing about my career that I think helped me go 10 years was being very process driven. I wasn't super concerned with results. I enjoyed the film study. I enjoyed yep. the nutrition. I enjoyed the working out. I enjoyed practice. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so, when those things became unenjoyable for me, I, I couldn't physically will myself to keep going. You know yeah. what I mean? And so if you enjoy what you do and you find a, and you have a passion for it, then you're willing to do those other kind of mundane things Absolutely. associated with it. 
And so I think that's something It's just make sure you enjoy what you do yeah. and your passion and like find your passion. It doesn't have to be football, right? Yeah. Like it might feel like it has to be football, find something you're passionate about and then like love every aspect of it. You just inspired me, man. <laughs> no, I definitely hear you on that hundred percent. Cause there's going to be so many things. There are days you might wake up like, I don't want to do it or I'm having tough times, but what keeps you driven is um, like you said, something you have passion for. So yeah. I know I said two questions, but or one question left, I actually two more. So looking at your career, man, like I know you weren't a big fan of like NFL. You don't really watch too much of it, but while you're in the league, who is someone that really popped out to you? They like, oh wow. Like this person is like amazing. Like this, like who, who are some players that you played with or against that really just stood out to you? Um, I mean, the list is almost endless, right? Like, yeah. so I played with Trent Williams, who was yeah. maybe one of the freakiest humans I've ever played with. I played with yeah. Julio Jones, who was, I mean, he's just built like a horse, you know what yeah. I mean? He runs fast, he jumps high, he works hard, he loves football. DeAndre Hopkins in Houston, same thing. Biggest hands I've ever seen, best hands I've ever seen. Um, Ryan Kerrigan, uh, you know, playing against DeMarcus Ware, playing against Alden Smith before he had the, all the issues. Yeah. Like, J.J. Watts. I mean, like, there are so many fantastic players in the NFL, guys yeah. that – are physically freakish and guys yeah. that work their tails off and yeah. everyone has a different asset and attribute. Like, you know, um, you know, Wat Watson, Watson. Yeah. In Houston, like I know he's going Sean through Watson. a myriad of legal issues, but he was one of the most impressive guys physically and professionally that I've ever been around. I don't know about his personal oh. life. Obviously that's coming to light now, but yeah. So many talented people like across, yeah. you know, Kevin Coleman, like he's a yeah. running back ran a four, three forty. You know what I mean? And oh, wow, seeing, I didn't know that. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, seeing that in, in live and in real color, you're like, holy cow. You know, what I mean? <laughs> you know, Trent Brown is like the largest human being on the face of the planet earth who can move and pass protect against Vaughn Miller. So, I mean, like, yeah. like, I think that's the cool thing about the NFL. Like it's such a small sample size of athletic performance that you get these guys at almost every turn. Like even guys who are undrafted, you're like, yeah. you're a freak. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what's his gauge i forgot his first name gay i was just called him gauge but anyway he he was a six round draft pick and now he's starting for them in atlanta and he's a tremendous athlete you see right. how does this guy slip through here but yeah. here he is you know so like i think that's the one of the, like that's the cool, cool thing for fans is just know that anybody even the third string guy on the roster is a freak yeah and baller and so those are some names that kind of stick out to me but i could literally be here all day just reciting oh, yeah people, you know that were i mean even like for all you old school uh, Washington football team fans, like Mike Sellers, for example, mm -hmm. he was 275 pounds. Huge, playing fullback. Fullback. <laughs> fullback. Yeah. And he could bench press. I remember one day I came in the weight room and, he, and like he was talking all this mess. He bent, he just got on the bench, did warm up, did 225 44 times and just put it in the rack and was like, okay, Joey Galloway. I saw Joey Galloway hang clean 365 for a triple. And oh he weighs gosh. like 190 pounds. Like, yeah, he's not, yeah. You know, the, the list is endless. Wow. That's awesome to hear, man. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, last question, man. I know you're involved with 1067 fan. Um, you have, you, uh, you do a lot of clips breaking down in your Instagram. Um, I'm sure you're involved a lot in fitting community. What are some current plans and some future plans you, you have going on? Right. So doing the radio, um, yeah. which has been fun to kind of keep football in my life and yeah. talk about football and something that was such a big part of my life for 10 years. I do personal training at the moment. Um, okay. I got about, I don't know, with my son home, it's hard to fill the day because you got to do homeschooling now too. But yeah. uh, I get about 20, 22 hours a week. So that's pretty good. And then I'm also yeah. trying to start my own business uh, with a piece of exercise equipment that I invented. Oh, cool. So you know, that has been a labor of love and talk about finding something you're passionate about and like that challenges you and you're up and down with it every day, you know, right. starting your own business. It's, uh, it's crazy hard, but it's been super rewarding. So that's, those are kind of my three things at the moment. And then probably the most important thing is just being around my kids and my wife and uh, being supportive of my family. Cause that's something that they've been supportive of me for, especially right. since I left Washington. Since I left Washington. So now, kind of be around and be with them every day has been, you know, probably the most important of those four things. So. Absolutely. That's cool to hear, man. Well, Hey, that adventure you have, I'm a big um, shark tank fan. So maybe we'll see you on there <laughs> one day, but just with your drive and all the experience that you've been through in life. I mean, you traveled everywhere because of the sports, yeah. you have a great background. You're a good guy. I could tell. So you're going to do well, man. <laughs>
I appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on, dude. Like this is uh, a lot of fun and hopefully uh, maybe be back in the future and whatever. So absolutely. Hey, we're to air. We'll have to catch up soon. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you, Logan. Uh, thanks, man.